if you're on this call, chances are it's because you are a trusted advisor to small businesses, that you have clients that are small businesses that are struggling through today's tough credit environment. And as a trusted advisor, it behooves you to become accustomed or familiar with the different forms of financing out there to help your clients. And what I hope to do today is to make you a little more familiar with one of those types of alternative types of financing. That is factoring. And I can tell you on this call today, we have bankers and CPAs, attorneys, business coaches, consultants, a variety of professionals, all trying to help small businesses in, in today's tough economic environment. And today I'm going to give you a, a basic understanding of factoring, how it works, the relevant terminology of factoring. I'm going to go to in sort of a step-by-step -step explanation of how factoring works at Versant, give you a feel for the competitive landscape, learn more about who else is out there providing factoring, the differences among different types of uh, factoring sources and when you might choose one over another. I'll go through some questions that I expect many of you will have after the, the presentation and then some examples of some recently funded transactions. But as I said here uh, at the beginning of the presentation, there, the GoToWebinar tool uh, provides you a mechanism to submit questions during the course of the presentation. You can do that through chat or through the questions feature, but those will come to me and then I'll go through all of them at the end of the call. Uh, and if for some reason we don't have time to get through them on this call, I'll contact you personally to answer those questions. Now let's dig a little bit deeper into the presentation. Just to start, what is factoring? Uh, in its simplest terms, what factoring is, is a sale of a company's accounts receivable in order to obtain working capital. So there's lots of types of factoring out there. What Versant provides is called non-recourse full notification factoring. What that means is the account debtors, which is another term for the customers of our clients, they are notified to pay Versant directly uh, rather than paying their supplier. Uh, and we take on the credit risk. We take on the risk of non-payment from that customer. So your client is getting a form of credit insurance by factoring their receivables. My background is SBA lending, so I'm very familiar with to the terminology of lending. The last bunch of years I've been doing factoring, and I find this is a good translation because I know many people on this call might be more familiar with loans than with factoring. So sort of the comparable term to loan in the factoring world is a factoring facility. Uh, we don't talk about loan amounts because there's, there's, we're not making loans, we're buying assets, uh, particularly the receivable. Uh, we talk about factoring volume. There's no lender. We have a factor or the purchaser receivables. Uh, that's Versant funding in this case. Uh, the, instead of a borrower, we have a client or the seller of receivables, which is usually your client that's coming to us for funding. Uh, there's a instead of a note or loan agreement, we have a purchase and sale agreement, making it very clear that what we're doing is we're buying assets from our clients. We're buying accounts receivable from them. There's no interest rate, and that's a, a telltale sign that somebody talking about factoring maybe doesn't have a good handle on how it works, they start asking about interest rate. There's no interest rate because there's no loan. There's a I'm sorry, I might, I might have just uh, lost audio there for a moment, but uh, again, you, you've seen this chart, I think you've got a good feel for how the two different terminologies compare. Uh, our client profile, we are looking to fund small to medium-sized companies with revenue anywhere from a million to a hundred million. We've got a few that are a little smaller, we've got uh, several that are quite a bit larger than that, but that's our target. Our average client probably has about five to ten million in annual revenue, and what they all have in, cl in common is that these businesses crave liquidity. They need cash. They just can't wait the 30, 60, 90 days to get paid by their customers. And what we do is we provide them that quick cash. The, the, the day they issue an invoice, the day they complete a sale, we're providing them valuable cash against those receivables. Um, if a client is coming to us for factoring, chances are they've been aced out of the traditional funding markets. And that can be for any number of reasons. It could be that it's a brand new company, doesn't have a track record yet, doesn't have a history that banks like to see before they lend to a company. Maybe they're just growing rapidly. That steep growth curve can, can spook a lot of banks. They're just not interested in working with a company that's growing too fast. Or maybe revenues are erratic. It's a seasonal business and revenues and profits go up and down. 
Um, a lot of our clients, the reason they're not bankable is because they're in some form of distress. Revenues might be trending down. They might be experiencing losses. Uh, maybe they're in the process of going through some major restructuring. It's not uncommon for our clients to currently be in workout with a bank. All of those things are okay. For whatever reason, the client is unbankable. Provided they've got good quality receivables, there's a great chance that we can help them. What's important to us is that our clients' customers be strong, and they are typically large corporations, uh, often their municipalities or other government agencies. But just to also to clarify that we, it's it's very easy for us to factor receivables due from household names with with triple A rated credit. Those are easy, but there's plenty of companies out there that the credit is good enough for us to factor the receivable. So for example, if we've got a client and they're selling millions of dollars to Walmart every month, that's easy. We'll buy it all. But if you have a client that's selling maybe tens of thousands of dollars to a medium-sized company, that could be okay too. Now we probably wouldn't factor millions from that medium-sized company, but it's all about the credit strength of the company being commensurate with our exposure to them. So there's lots and lots of companies out there uh, whose receivables we would ver be very happy to factor. For us, we, we work with a wide variety of industries, so for, it's easier for us to tell you the few industries we don't work with, and those are medical and construction. But just about any other industry is fair game, and when I say medical, we won't factor receivables due, from, uh, due to medical practices from insurance companies, Medicare, Medicaid, those type of receivables. We happily factor medical billing companies, medical equipment suppliers, medical staffing. Uh, it's just that the those particular brand of receivables, insurance company, Medicare, Medicaid, we avoid. But that leaves a wide range of industries that we can factor. So in our portfolio, we have manufacturers, we have distributors, wholesalers, staffing. It really is a, a wide range. What they all have in common is good quality receivables. How we help is we provide our clients quick quick liquidity. We get them cash very rapidly, and it's not uncommon for us to go from uh, you're introducing us to a client to five days later we're funding them. Uh, we can the reason we can move so quickly is we are not underwriting your client's business. We're looking at their receivables, who are their customers. So with as little as a recent account receivable aging and a customer list, I can tell you within 24 hours whether or not it's a transaction that we can accommodate. Now. The, the biggest hurdle for, to us funding a transaction quickly is if there's an existing lien on the receivables, if there's existing financing in place. That doesn't mean that we necessarily can't help the client. It means we've got another step we have to go through. We have to get the cooperation of that existing lender. That might mean we have to pay them off in full, which that's the simplest way of going about it if the cash is there to do it. Or we have to get them to agree to subordinate or release their lien on those receivables. And we can sometimes do that through a partial pay down with ongoing scheduled payments thereafter, uh, or you know, some combination of pay down, release of collateral, but we, we've got a lot of experience in helping our clients work with their existing lender to try to get them to cooperate and release that lien so we can provide the client the liquidity they need, hopefully, to grow themselves out of a bank's workout department. In terms of how a business uses factoring funds, again, Comparing it to my time as an SBA lender, where we had to account for where every penny of loan proceeds was spent, with factoring, it's completely up to the client how they want to use the proceeds. But what I have here is a list of common ways our clients use factoring proceeds. Sometimes to finance a project. It's very often to fund growth or take advantage of a supplier discount. Uh, we have some clients that are in bankruptcy, and we provide debtor and possession financing. We've helped clients to acquire a business by turning the receivable portion of the purchase price into cash to help uh, meet the, the buyer's price. Uh, and, but generally, it's used to meet the ongoing working capital needs of the business, and it is used as a bridge. It's a short-term gap that we help to fill. And what we like to think is we're bridging our clients to, to bankability, to where they are now, whether it be new, in distress, or rapidly growing, to a stabilized point where a bank is more interested in lending to them. Now I'm going to try to give you ideas to the the, the flow of cash in, in a factoring transaction. Um, usually our client completes a sale. They either provide their service or deliver the product and invoice their customer. Usually that same day we're, we receive the invoice and we verify it. We contact their customer and confirm that the invoice they provided us matches with what the customer received or was provided. Then we wire our client 75% of that invoice amount immediately. And now we get paid directly by the client's customer. 
uh, when we receive payment, maybe it's 30 days, maybe it's 45, maybe it's 60 days later, we then forward our client what's called the rebate. That's the balance, that remaining 25% we didn't initially advance, and then take out our factoring fee. And on an average transaction, our factoring fee is anywhere from 25 to 3% of the invoice amount for every 30 days that invoice was outstanding. A little more specifically, it's 25 on average, 2.5% for the first 30 days, then 0.84% for each additional 10 days. So the longer that invoice is outstanding, the higher the fee will, will get. But we give our clients a lot of information, a lot of data on the performance of their receivables. So they'll know what's outstanding, how long it's been outstanding, so they get a feel for what that fee is going to be, and they've got some, some ability to control that. They can buy back a receivable. You know, let's say they've invoiced a customer, we factor that invoice, and now there's a dispute that they're working through. Uh, they, the client might want to buy back the invoice to avoid that fee accruing and getting higher and higher on that invoice that's in dispute. Uh, but what a lot of our clients tell us is when they initially come to us, they worry, well, if I start factoring my receivables, I'm going to start to lose control, I'm not going to know what's going on with them, I'm going to uh, you know, lose my connection to my receivable. But once they're with us for a while, they realize, well, they actually have more information now than they did before they factored. The, the information we provide them in the form of this online system, the service in terms of our being much more on top of their receivables than they usually are, uh, usually provides improved performance and increased information on how their receivables are, are doing. And then Receivables are it's a constant flow of cash between Versant and our, uh, and, our, and our client. That's what I try to illustrate here in this, in this diagram, is that some clients, as often as every day, they're providing us new invoices, we're issuing new advances of 75%, we're getting paid by their customers, so we're giving our clients that rebate. Usually every week we provide a rebate to them. So it's a constant flow of cash, and one of the advantages of factoring over a asset-based line of credit or uh, a more traditional bank facility term loan is that the more the client needs, the more they can use us. The, the greater their sales, the, the more we'll factor, as long as they keep selling a good quality company. So as the business grows, this facility just grows automatically with them. It's not like, okay, six months from now, the revenues have doubled, and they need to ask for an increase, an extension. No, as long as they keep selling to good quality companies, we just grow right along with them. And that's our hope, is to help them grow uh, to a point where they can, they can pay us off with a, a bank facility. Next, I'd like to give you a little feel for what else is out there in the, in the factoring universe. There's a couple of main categories of, of factors out there. Um, largest category, we call category one here, is, is lots and lots of little factors. These are typically companies that are not, not very well capitalized. They might have a, a small bank line of credit. They might have some owner capital in the business. Um, but they've got a lot of restrictions on the size of the deals they can do, um, the industry concentration, the customer concentration that they allow, and they're really looking for companies that have a, a low need, a small need for funding on a monthly basis. And there's lots of them out there. Then there's next category of, of factor, which are the, some of the big boys, CIT, Bibi, Rosenthal. They are large companies looking for well-established companies, usually just one small notch below what a traditional bank would be willing to fund. Uh, and I can tell you both of these categories of factors are referral sources of mine. Um, because we don't overlap very much, we're looking at for different types of deals. Uh, the, where Versant might be a little different is our willingness to do large deals. Uh, for example, a lot of the other factoring companies have restrictions on how much they can fund any one company or how much concentration they can allow the company to have with any one customer. We are privately owned and, and privately funded, so it, it's up to us to figure out the kind of deals we want to do. So we tend to do some larger deals. We've got clients that are factoring as much as $15 million every month with us. Uh, we've got clients where they're only factoring a single customer. So in other words, 100% customer concentrations, which just you can't get that from any other factoring companies. Also, since we are a small privately owned company, we are more of a boutique and provide the kind of service you might get from a, a, a small investment bank or a small private bank. Uh, we've assigned each of our clients an account executive. Uh, which is similar to sort of the private bankers of old. Um, so just one example, our typical deal has a 75% advance rate, as I mentioned earlier. Maybe a business has a chance to take advantage of some great supplier discount or has an immediate need for a little more cash than usual. They contact their account executive and ask for an increase or a, an over advance, which we do all the time, which we then pay down um, uh, over time. 
But the point is they have not just an 800 number where they're stuck into customer service nightmare of hoping somebody answers their call. They have a person they talk to who knows about their business, who knows what they're up to. In addition to all the automated tools we provide to provide data in the form of web-based reporting on the performance of their receivables. Next, I just want to go through a few questions I expect many of you may already have about, about Versant. Basic requirements for, for factoring. Well, that a, a business sells something whether it be a good or a service, to good quality customers. Um, we can do business in all 50 states. We've got clients all over the place. We just want to see that a, a company is based in the U.S. and sells to U.S. companies. We've made a few exceptions where we have funded some businesses that are based abroad or selling to foreign companies, but that's not our specialty. Our specialty is working with U.S. companies who sell to U.S. companies. Does Versant require certified financial statements in the application process? Answer, no. We don't want to see, we don't need to see financials, we don't need to see tax returns or personal credit or personal financial information. For us, it's all about the receivables, it's all about the customers. So we're not, we're not going to look at that information. What's important to us is who are the customers. The next question is, does a company have to be profitable to qualify for factoring? And again, the answer is no. Um, some of our clients are brand new. They don't have a track record yet. They're not yet profitable. Uh, but with our funding, hopefully we can, we can help them get there at some point. Uh, and a lot of our clients, they were profitable and hope to be again, but they're, they've got some problem. You know, sometimes the problem is mismanagement through the recession. Sometimes the problem is the industry has changed very quickly out from under them, uh, and they're working to, to line things up again. Uh, in many cases, just the, the recession just changed the, the, the game on a lot of these companies, and they're, they're working to get themselves back in shape. But right now, they're not profitable. And that's okay with us as long as they've got those good quality receivables that we can factor. Next question is, how long does the closing process take? Well, as I referenced earlier, speed is what we're all about. And it's not uncommon for us to go from introduction to funding a week later. Uh, again, the most common delay, we honestly, often it's the client just being slow to sign documents and getting them back to us, or the other is that existing bank lien that I mentioned. If it's out there, we've got another hurdle we need to get over uh, with some Hopefully, a little persistence and some cooperation, we can get there. But that's the most common reason a deal is delayed is a, a lien. From companies in which industries will Versant purchase accounts receivable? Well, as I referenced earlier, most industries are eligible. Uh, we stay away from medical practices and construction. And I know some specialists in those industries, so if anybody on this call is looking for that type of connection, I'd be happy to put you in touch with someone. But we do everything else. We've got manufacturers, distributors. Wholesalers, staffing, consulting, software, again, it, as long as they've got good quality companies, we're not too concerned about what they sell. Is there a minimum volume of receivables which a client must commit to factor in order to qualify? If in, in most cases, we look for companies that can factor at least 100000 per month. Uh, we've been known to do some a little smaller if we think there's an opportunity for that business to grow and go beyond $100,000. Uh, but we're not in the business of doing small, real small deals. And again, I've got people I could connect you with if anybody in this call is looking for someone there. Next question, does Versant require personal guarantees? The answer is no. Um, it's one of the great advantages of our program is that we do not require personal guarantees. The reason is we're not looking for the owners of the company for repayment. We are looking for their customers to make payments. So as long as we're comfortable in the credit of their customers, we're not looking for personal guarantees. And and I mentioned earlier that other factors are a great referral source for me, and, and that's often one reason is that the owners cannot or will not provide a personal guarantee, which just makes them ineligible for factoring most places. What we do require is called a performance guarantee, and sometimes that's for, referred to as an anti-fraud guarantee. And what that's about is someone at the company, our client's business, must stand behind the quality of the work or product. And what that means is, let's say, we factor, we purchase a receivable, and the company doesn't pay. Well, if they don't pay because they can't, they're out of business, and that's our loss. If they don't pay because they refuse, because the product was defective or the service provider was not what they requested, that's still our client's responsibility. So that's the performance guarantee. They guarantee that they've performed the service, provided the product uh, that was provided for in those invoices. Who qualifies for factoring? Well, we've got a wide range of companies that qualify, including those that are in distress, so negative net worth, losing money. We do provide what's called debtor in possession financing, dip financing for companies that are currently in bankruptcy. Uh, and we, we do see uh, sometimes that a uh, company might be 
currently with the bank, but the bank is willing to release some collateral in order to give the client a little uh, extra working capital to hopefully get them out from their problems, and we can work with those all the time. It's common for us to work with companies that are currently in work out with their bank. Next question, can a company with little or no credit history qualify for factoring? And yes, we have had clients where we factored the first invoice they ever issued. So brand new startup, no history at all. And honestly, we had a couple of clients where what little history there was was not was not positive. The uh, the owners had a history of a couple of failed businesses in the past, so they were really unbankable. Um, but what they had going for them was some good companies, some good customers, some good receivables. So what we hope to do is help them reestablish a track record um, so to the point where they can reprove themselves and qualify for bank financing down the road. Must the client's customers always know when a company is seeking financing through factoring? The answer is yes. The reason we're able to get our clients money so quickly with so little review of their financial condition is because we're relying so strongly on their receivables and getting paid by their customers so it's important to us that those customers pay us directly now as this next question poses will a company seeking factoring be viewed negatively by its customers and while all of our clients are worried about this and it's, pro it's wise to do that. You should worry what your customers think of you. It's not the negative. It's not the red flag that many of our clients expect it to be, particularly if our clients are selling to good quality big companies. Those big companies, they are paying factors already. They've got hundreds, in many cases, thousands of suppliers who are getting paid through a factor. And often it's nothing more than a, a, flip, a switch being flipped in an AP system and now checks are cut to a new, a new location. Often our clients' main contacts at their customer aren't even aware of this change so it's so routine and also we are still in a very tight credit environment and while companies don't really brag about and talk about how they're getting funding to factoring many many are uh, and the fact that they're needing to tell their their customers that they've got financing and it's through a factor is not a negative it's often viewed positively in that now their customers know okay they've got the capital they need they've got the the funding they need to continue to service us as an account so it's very common that our clients worry about this. In the end, it's not the issue they expect. And, and a common way we help to overcome this objection is once we've had a conversation, once we've reviewed the receivables, we figure out, okay, this is a viable deal that we think we can do, we let them talk to some of our existing clients, clients that came into us maybe a year or more ago with the same worries, the same concerns about what is this going to do to my customer relationships. And then by using us, they realize that it's just not an issue. It's not impacting their relationships in a negative way. So we, we let them hear it directly from our own clients. Um, came to us with the same concern they had so that they can help put their mind at ease. This next is, a, is an illustration I like to show that gives people the idea of how factoring can actually improve profitability. Because uh, we talked about how factoring is going to cost about 2.5% per month. Um, so some people wonder, what? oh, my God, that's outrageous. You know, that's so much money. How can I afford to pay that much? Well, it's all about what you're comparing us to. And often our clients, if they could qualify for a cheap bank line of credit, they would do that. And they should if they can get all the funding they need from a bank. But if we can help them complete more sales than they could before using us, it can make a lot of sense. And here in this example, we show that, okay, revenues go from 100 to 200,000 by factoring. The cost of goods sold and the gross profit remain constant through factoring, as do their, uh, their variable costs as a percentage of, of sales. But now add in the cost of factoring in the after factoring example. So in, in this case, the factoring was, was going to cost them uh, $10,000 additionally. Uh, but because Revenue were able to increase. In this case, they were able to double. Now, that might be a bit extreme, but it shows that a profit went from 5000 to 20000 And this is, certainly these are very round numbers. This is not a, a perfect real-life example, but it can show you that if, the re if revenues can go up, you can do incremental sales by factoring. Paying a factoring fee uh, can make a lot of sense. And what we hope our clients can do by using us is grow, bring on new customers, increase sales, get stabilized, and then pass off with cheaper financing down the road. Maintain those sales, and then you take out the cost of factoring, replace it with a smaller number in the cost of the bank financing, and net profit just goes up even that much more. But we'll provide that bridge to help them take on the new customers, increase sales, and uh, eventually really increase the profitability. Next, I'd like to, to cite a few examples. I think this can be a great way to help visualize when a client would be a good referral to Versant. 
This first one is a consumer electronics manufacturer. This was a long-standing business. I think it was probably close to 20 years. Uh, and they sold sort of a lower-end tablets, e-readers, MP3 players, that sort of electronic. And they had some great customers, you know, selling to, to mainstream retailers. But then they had a problem. They had a large shipment of a defective product go out to one of those retailers. Uh, but they did the right thing. They took it all back. Uh, you know, refurbished it and eventually resold it, but it cost them a lot of money to do that. Uh, in addition, it violated their bank covenant because of their high return rate, and the bank was not willing to uh, to renegotiate. They they froze their line, uh, so they needed financing as soon as they could, they, as soon as possible, to meet their working capital needs. Uh, and no other banks would consider it because of the, the size. This was, this was a substantial transaction. Um, also, the industry spooked a lot of the other factors because what factoring companies worry about. In the world of electronics, they worry about a, a return, which which happened here. So a, def a defective product goes out, and it comes back, and there are repercussions. But we were willing to to to, to jump in, and we were ready to fund in the time frame that they required. Next example is a commercial printer, sort of an old line business. They were still holding on while a lot of other printers are, are falling off. Um, falling, just going out of business. This one held on. Their little niche was they would print statements for cell phone customers. So while lots and lots of people are getting their cell phone bills electronically, there's still literally tens of millions who get a paper copy every month, and this company helped to print a lot of those. The issue here was this company was recently acquired. The buyer purchased it using a large portion of seller financing. And the seller was was sort of getting her nose into this business, was contacting customers, contacting suppliers, was really being a nudge, and they had to get out from under her. So they what they did was they did a sale leaseback of some of the printing equipment to raise some capital. They factored a big chunk of the receivables to raise some cash to pay her off and get her out of the business. So it's a that one was a little bit unusual for us, but still the in the end this company couldn't get bank financing. They were able to get out from under their problems by factoring their receivables. The next example is a software provider, and what they this company did security software, and their issue was they were very focused on a merger. They put all of the resources for the better part of a year into making a merger happen, and the merger was with a complementary technology, and they expected that this was really going to take them to the next level. So, but in the meantime, they neglected the uh, the core operation of the business. Financials suffered, uh, new product development suffered, customer relationships suffered. Revenues started ticking down, 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 and then the merger didn't go through. They were no longer bankable. Um, they had some slow-paying receivables due to some pretty good entities, some uh, uh, hospitals, oops, uh, from hospitals, from uh, municipalities. So these were good quality customers, but they were paying slowly. Uh, other co other factors shot away because of the the nature of the industry being software. A lot of factors are uncomfortable with, with software. We were able to get there, and this company is, is actually been, been our client of ours for about a year now, and is looking much better uh, than when, when they started with us. Next example is a t-shirt manufacturer, and this company had really struggled through the recession. Sales were way down, and uh, this is another case of a little bit of mismanagement in that they were very close to bringing on a very big customer who was going to buy a whole lot of their product. And they started to grow inventory to, to meet that demand, but then the deal never went through. Um, so they were now out of covenant on their bank loan. They had much too much inventory. Um, you know, thankfully for them, it's fairly generic, you know, mostly blank T-shirts. They, they thought they could sell them eventually, but it was going to take some time. Uh, and the bank was not going to cooperate. They were not going to be patient through that process. So they, they froze their line. They needed an alternative source. Um, they were able to get a, a large principal reduction from the bank because the bank really wanted to get rid of them. But this was this was a tough deal, not only for a bank but for other factors because the financial condition of the business was really, really weak, and there was going to be a high customer concentration. Um, but we were able to get there through an intercreditor agreement. We uh, we were talking about partnering with an inventory lender on this deal, uh, and we were that we were again going to be ready to to meet their their funding needs. So that's the bulk of uh, my prepared presentation. Uh, as, I, as I said, I asked you to submit any questions you might have um, through the features of GoToWebinar. So let me just, if you can bear with me a moment as I check to see uh, what questions we might have. Uh, first question is, will Versant fund international deals, deals with foreign customers or foreign clients? Well, 
it is, it is not our specialty. We really are focused on working with U.S. companies that are selling to other U.S. companies. Uh, we have made the occasional exception, but I, I don't want to give you the impression that we're focused on international business. Uh, question here, I see, do you have programs? Uh, I'm sorry, what guarantees do you require? Uh, we don't require a personal guarantee. We require, require what's called a performance guarantee. So we need our clients to stand behind the quality of the work or um, the quality of the product delivered. But we do not require that they sign a personal guarantee. Uh, it's actually one great advantage of our product over some others is a lot of factors do require a full personal guarantee, but that is not something that, that we do require. Uh, next, what information is required for underwriting? Well, we don't need a whole lot. What I can do is uh, I can send anyone who'd like uh, a copy of our intake checklist. It spells out the few pieces of information we need in order to assess a client for factoring. But what it comes down to is we want to know who are the customers. So a customer list, a recent receivable aging, tell me about the margins of the business. You know, as we talked about in our example, if the margins of the business are strong, there's lots of room in there to increase profitability by increasing sales and still in eating the cost of the factoring. So we want to know about the margins and what are the liens might there be in place. So with a few questions, a few pieces of information, we can very quickly tell you if your client is viable. So I'll be happy to send anybody that checklist after the call. Uh, what if the company is service oriented? Um, we're happy to work with service businesses. We've got a lot of them. Um, staffing companies are a great example. If you've got a staffing company, you better pay your employees every two weeks or they're gone. Uh, but your customers are probably paying you in 30 days if you're lucky, uh, maybe 45, 60 in most cases. So that's going to cause a, a gap. Uh, if you've got a deep pockets or a bank line of credit, you can easily fill that gap. But if you don't, um, you need help, and what we can do is when we factor those invoices, they're getting 75% of the cash the day they issue it to pay their employees, keep the place running, and then um, the balance when they get paid less our fee. Um, so service business we're happy to work with. And we still, we're still verifying the invoices, just instead of verifying delivery of a product, we're verifying completion of a service. Do you offer purchase order or PO financing, to a limited extent, we really are focused on factoring. Factoring is really what we do, but in some cases we can offer PO financing, and the way we do that is we issue a letter of credit that will be payable to a client supplier once the product is in the hands of the end customer. So this works in cases where there's a third party manufacturer. So your client is quote unquote manufacturing a product, but it's really being produced in China. And we put up a letter of credit that allows that Chinese manufacturer to, to produce it without getting paid up front. Um, I often get calls from people looking for what they call PO financing, looking for me to give them cash now against a PO. And that's not available because uh, just a lot can go wrong from the time you get a PO to the time you deliver a product. So that limited PO finance we offer is when there's a third-party manufacturer who will do work with an LC instead of cash. And then the way we pay off the LC is by factoring the resulting receivable when the product is in the hands of the end customer. So PO financing in those very limited cases, I'm happy to talk to anyone with greater interest uh, after the call. Uh, next question, do you consider in transit inventory as part of the inventory collateral or only what's on hand? We don't, we don't fund against inventory. Uh, we are strictly a factoring company. So we factor receivables associated with delivered product for, or completed service. So we do not finance inventory. Uh, I, often will work with inventory finance companies if inventory is a big part of a client's assets and they need that extra cash to meet their needs. So I'm happy to talk with you about connecting you with a source if necessary. Uh, next, what are common reasons for decline of a factoring transaction? Well, the biggest one is just the quality of their customers. Um, for example, if a company is strong, you know, maybe they're doing well, um, they've been around a long time, but their customers are small, independent businesses. That's just not a good fit for what we do because for us, it's all about the quality of their receivables, the quality of their customers. So that's not much we can do there. On the flip side, if a company is brand new or no history or a weak history, but they've got good quality AR, uh, we, we can help them. So the quality of the receivables is the biggest reason for decline. Uh, and then the next, I'm not sure if you'd call this a decline, but it's a, the most common reason why we don't fund a deal uh, in many cases, deals that we would like to fund is an existing lien on the receivables. 
we talk to clients all the time that uh, they've got a bank facility, but it's just not large enough. It, it just doesn't meet all of the working capital needs. Um, but they've got a blanket lien on all assets that bank, and that means we can't do anything anything for that client until that bank is paid off or that lien is released. So that's the most common reason why a deal doesn't go through is because there is that existing bank lien that we just can't get out from under. Do you have programs for brokers? And absolutely, a lot of our business comes to us from brokers. We've got a referral program. Um, we pay referral fees to brokers uh, when when appropriate. Um, so I'm happy to talk to to anybody who wants to learn more about our, our broker program. Um, we, because of the nature of our business, we do not market this business to directly to customers. We market all to their advisors, and among them are brokers. So we're happy to work with brokers. Uh, tell me a little bit about about Versant, to your your ownership, your your funding structure. Uh, well, as as I alluded to earlier in the call, we are a privately owned company. We are privately funded. Uh, our owner is our funding source. His name is Mark Weinberg. Mark's got uh, over twenty years in the, in the factoring business. And, uh, was one of the co-owners, co-founders of Platinum Funding years ago. Sold his interest. Uh, did so without signing a non-compete. So was able to start up another factoring company. And I've been working with Mark for about uh, about four and a half years now. And what I love about working with this company is, again, I mentioned I used to be with an SBA lender. I was actually with CIT most, most of my career. Uh, a lot of strengths to that company, but it's a, it's a large company with lots of layers, lots of bureaucracy. And here I have very quick access to the decision maker. Um, once I determine deal sounds viable, we we'll quickly quick put together a call with, with the owner of the company, with Mark. And we talk about, is this a deal we want to do? Uh, if the answer is no, you'll know that very quickly. And maybe we'll have some ideas for you on where we can point you to another financing source. But if the answer is yes, you only have to hear yes once. It's not like you're going to now go to an underwriter and then to committee and then it's just you're going to find out very quickly if the deal is viable. Uh, which is great for initial decisions. It's great for us doing some aggressive deals that others would not do. It's great when you're a client of ours and there's issues and we get to talk to you know not just some customer service drone, you're talking to uh, the owner of the company. So it's a great advantage to work with first is our, our ownership structure. And we've also we're also very well capitalized, which allows us to do some some very large deals, um, some high concentration deals that are just not typically available out there. Well, I think I've answered all the questions that the audience had. Uh, I really appreciate your, your time today. Well, each of you will receive a link to a recording of this, this conference so that you can listen to it and, and forward it to anyone you think also might be interested. And I look forward to us having an opportunity to work together. Thanks so much.